CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, uses computer software to simulate real-world engineering problems. These problems are usually difficult or impossible to hand calculate accurately. One set of equations that cannot be hand solved are called Navier Stokes equations. Additionally, some applications of CFD include flare modeling, analysis of turbines, and airfoil analysis. CFD is an important resource to determine if a project is feasible. It's also an inexpensive way to experiment with different engineering designs of a system without actually building it. For our project, we decided to analyze a paper airplane using CFD. So without any further ado, welcome to CFD Analysis of a Paper Airplane by Caitlin Barlow and Elena Collins. For this project, we used an existing SOLIDWORKS model of a paper airplane. However, we could not use this file until we exported it into ANSYS Fluent. In order to export, we had to locate the CAD configuration program. Once this program was located, we had to run this program as an admin. Then select the SOLIDWORKS checkbox and choose the Workbench option. And then configure, and once this was done, ANSYS and SOLIDWORKS could then be connected. Now ANSYS Fluent was opened and the geometry was imported. You can double check that the geometry imported correctly. And once you confirm that the geometry has been downloaded correctly, you can then create the enclosure. To create an enclosure around the plane, go to Tools, select Enclosure. Then when Enclosure pops up, select Cylinder as the shape and make all the, the dimensions 0.35 meters. This will encase the paper airplane in a cylinder. Once the cylinder has been created, make sure that it is a fluid and not a solid, and then suppress the paper airplane by right-clicking and clicking Suppress. Once this is done, make sure your geometry has been saved, and then it's time to move on to meshing. This right here it will be the finished mesh. In order to get this, make sure that your element size is 0.05, which makes sure that the elements are a little smaller because the paper plane is a smaller object. Then body size the cylinder and make sure it's sphere of influence with a sphere radius of 0.15 meters and element size of 0.05. This is the same as the default that we made for the mesh. And then for face sizing, you're going to select all faces of the paper airplane itself. And then you're going to make the element size 0. 0.0005, or 5 to the negative 4th. And then, in order to make sure that the mesh is well suited for this, add refinement. Again, select all 14 faces of the paper airplane and set the refinement to 1. And then the mesh should generate. If it doesn't, it may require some trial and error to make sure that the mesh is appropriate for this scenario or for your scenario. A helpful tip for the mesh is if it shows up as this, you can always click wireframe, which helps you see inside the mesh. To ensure that you have the best mesh, you can create section planes by drawing a line like so, and double checking that the mesh is more fine near your object. And you can also take different section planes just to make sure that it is more fine where the center of the object is. And then you can just click your selection there and voila. Additionally, you can zoom in without section planes just to like check the mesh fineness. And then we're going to name the sections. This will be the outlet. This will be the inlet. And then the plane is just the plane. Once this is all together, we can then move on to setup. 
pick and set, first you're going to make sure that you have a K epsilon model, reliable and enhanced wall treatment. Once this is confirmed, you're moving on to materials. Make sure that you choose air. This is a paper airplane and we're using air as a medium. And then you're going to move on to boundary conditions, inlet specifically. And then you're going to absolute 0.5 meters per second and click apply. And then for monitors, you're going to set all the residual monitors to 1 to the negative fifth power. Click OK. Then you're going to initialize standard. You're going to compute from inlet. Click initialize. And then run calculations. The first time we ran calculations, we did 50. But since we did an animation for a velocity conjure, we upped the number of inter iterations to better show that animation. If you do set up animation, you click calculation activities after you hit initialize, but before you run. And then you set up the animation based on an animation object. In this case, we run it first and then set the animation, so that's why we already have contours and path lines set up. In this case, we create plane surfaces in order to better show what's inside the cylinder. In order to do that, create plane, and then you're going to specify which plane you want to base it off of. And for this, we used the ZX plane. And then we did the um, Y based off of our SOLIDWORKS file to create the planes. And this comes in handy when looking at the contours. Because as you can see, you can actually see the plane now. In order to create a contour, click contour, and then you can show velocity like we did, and then choose which plane. In this case, plane four, and then save and display, and this will be your result. If you notice, the plane isn't fully cut out, but if you refer to the SOLIDWORKS file, you can see when the plane was folded, it wasn't folded equally. So this has resulted in a little bit of an offset here. We created another contour to kind of show that area, but since the contours are really similar, you don't have to go that extra mile with that. And then you can actually see the velocity here. Make sure to uncheck stored view if you actually want to zoom in and see the animation. As you can see, it starts off all red and then it's flying through the air. This helps show what path line area to focus on. For our actual path lines, we need two. And to do that, you go to path lines and then you select wall fluid. And then we did velocity. So we saved and displayed that. And then we did a turbulence one. So for the first path line, we did velocity. As you can see, the outer wall shows, but if you zoom in, actually see what's going on inside. Oh, 
but then you can zoom in or out and see the direction of the path lines. We did the same with turbulence. Again, choose the best view. You can zoom in and see what's going on inside. 